Hi, and welcome back. This is part three of the home lab setup. So in the last video, we went ahead and we installed the Hyper-V role on our 2019 server. And we actually created a VM with another server 2019 on it. So what we're going to want to do, it kind of left it off um, with basically just kind of installing and then we would set up our administrator password. So I already went ahead and did the administrator password. I've also gone ahead and set up two other things for the purpose of this video here, which we've already seen in other videos of how to do. Um, so all we did is we changed the computer name. Now, again, to do that is you would just click on the computer name, come into change here, and you would change the computer name. You're gonna leave it in the same work group in this case. Uh, and then you could just click okay. You'll have to restart after that and then set up the static address here, which is just by clicking on, it'll be IPv4 assigned by DHCP. You're just going to click on that, right click on the Ethernet, click on properties, double click on IPv4, and then assign all your values here. Now, what we're going to want to go ahead and do now is we are going to want to go ahead and install the Active Directory domain services. And this is going to give us the ability to bring up a Active Directory domain, and then we're going to be able to domain join computers to it, create a bunch of users, and do all that fun stuff. So let's go ahead and let's click on Manage at the top here, Add Roles and Features, and we're going to want to click on Next. You're going to want to install a role-based or feature-based installation. We're going to want to make sure our server is selected here. And we are going to go ahead and we are going to select Active Directory Domain Services, leave everything as is, include the management tools. We're going to add features here. Uh, we're going to click on Next here. Uh, we're not going to add any features. Uh, and then basically here, it's going to say that the Active Directory Domain Services stores information about users, computers, and other devices on the network, basically to facilitate resource sharing. Um, so. ADDS will require DNS server to be installed on the network. If you do not have a DNS server, you will be prompted to install the DNS server role on this machine. So that's why I didn't really select it because this is already going to do it for us. Um, this server will become your DNS server as well. So let's go ahead and let's just click on next here. And we're just going to restart the destination server if it needs to be, which I believe it doesn't need to be in this case. And we're going to click on install. We're just going to wait till this finishes here. This should take probably a couple minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and we're going to come back once it's all complete. All right, so the um, setup is all done here. So basically, it does need a configuration afterwards. It actually did not need a restart, as I thought, but I just figured I would check that box just in case. Um, so it does say here additional steps are required to make this machine a domain controller. Um, so promote this server to domain controller. We are going to go ahead and click on that here. And we are going to get this window that comes up here. It's just finishing loading. So we're just going to let that load a little bit. All right. So we're going to add domain controller to an existing domain, add a new domain to an existing forest, or add new forest. We are actually going to go ahead and we're going to click add new forest because this is going to be a completely new uh, domain and uh, like Active Directory domain for us. So let's go ahead and let's do the root domain name. We are going to put this to um, jackedprogrammer.ca. All right, and the forest functional level, we have that set to 2016. And the domain functional level will also be Windows Server 2016. That is the newest one that you can get here. And then uh, the domain controller capabilities, we are going to leave that to domain name services because we don't have one. And the global catalog. And we are going to go ahead, we are going to type this password. Now, you're definitely going to want to remember this password. Because if you ever are locked out, this is the password you will need uh, to really kind of save yourself out of some trouble. But since this is only a home lab, um, honestly, what I would probably do is just delete the VMs and recreate them. 
Um, of course, if you have a lot of data on it, um, that might not be your option. You might actually have to try to fix it. Uh, but I definitely try to keep home labs pretty much as scrappable as possible. Um, like before this, I had everything set up on my Windows 10 machine. Like I said in the first video, this is going to be completely new, um, completely new IPs, completely new domain name. Uh, so this is really just some test machines, really. Uh, so we're going to click on Next here. And then this is could be fine. We will not create a DNS delegation. And then this will generate a net BIOS domain name for us. It should be pretty accurate to what we would want it to be. So here, because of Jacked Programmer being too long, and I do remember this from the last time, it kind of chops off the R because I believe it's limited to 15 characters. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go back here for this part, and I'm just going to make it jacked.ca. Um, just so it doesn't get chopped off. It doesn't really matter, but just for myself, I kind of like having it the exact same for both. So we're just gonna have to go through all these steps again here. And then the net BIOS name will be generated once again. So here we should see jacked, which that's perfectly fine. Uh, so here, the paths, this is going to be for your database um, files and your log files. I keep these the exact same as what they are here. You could change them if you wanted to. Uh, I'm going to click on Next here. And this is just a little review here. Now, what you can do is you can actually export this to a PowerShell script to be able to automate this in the future. So if you click on this View Script here, you're actually going to get the exact PowerShell commands you would need for this deployment. So that's actually really, really cool. Um, you definitely might want to actually copy this for it. Um, but I'm going to probably be making some videos on how to automate some Hyper-V VM deployments. Uh, we might even automate some Active Directory deployments too in the future. Uh, but definitely feel free to copy paste this as well for your own use right now. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and we're just going to click on next here. And definitely feel free in the comment section if you guys have like any um, desires for like videos or something, uh, just let me know in the comments. I know that I've made one in the past for someone uh, for CSV files. Uh, I, I enjoyed making that video a lot. So if you guys have something that you guys want, definitely post it in the comments. If I know enough about the topic, I will definitely be making the video. Um, so everything here actually should be OK. Um, none of these warnings are actually very bad. All the prerequisites checked pass successfully. That's the part that I really, um, really matters to me. Uh, we are going to go ahead. We're going to click on Install here. And this is going to complete the installation here. So this might take a little while, especially since I only dedicated one gig uh, to this machine. So we will come back when this is all complete. All right, so the setup is all done here. So basically, it'll tell you that you're about to be signed out. Windows will shut down in less than a minute. We are just going to go ahead and we're just going to close that here. We're going to close out of this, and it's going to reboot here. So we are just going to wait for it to restart. But this is pretty much it. Like This will have our Active Directory set up. Um, there's a few other things that we need to do that I like to do right away, uh, which is basically configure a administrator account other than the default one. Um, and I like to kind of disable the default one just because like if you want to make this like a good home lab, um, definitely you don't have to follow like all the best practices, but following definitely a good amount of them is a really good practice um, for a work environment. Um, but one of the main things is definitely getting rid of that default administrator account this way when hackers kind of try to password spray uh, to get in, 
uh, the default administrator name is, is kind of pointless. We're going to be creating a username that I don't really recommend. I just kind of like it. Again, we aren't exposing this domain to the outside. So I'm a little bit less stri stringent on the naming convention. Like my administrator account is usually named Jack Admin on my home lab, which still has the word admin, which kind of gives it away of what it is. Um, but you could use anything you want. Um, and then a lot of times, if you have like an Azure setup, you have what's called like a, a honey token account, which you're actually going to want to name like admin just to capture um, like bad actors that are trying to log in to your network. So we're just going to let this uh, reboot here. And I'm actually going to come back once it's fully rebooted. All right, and we are back. The server just came back online here. So let's just get into it here. So we have our jacked backslash administrator, which is our domain and our domain administrator right now. So we're just gonna put in the password that we put in during our setup here. So we're just gonna log in here. And we have this here. So what we're gonna wanna do once the server manager pops up, we could go into tools and we have active directory users and computers. Whereas you can do it this way, which once it comes up, we're gonna see it. If I were you guys, I would definitely add a little bit more RAM than one gig like I did to mine. It will run a lot smoother. I'm probably going to be upping this server to take um, two or three gigs. Um, I should have enough for that and a couple other VMs. So here we have our active um, directory users and computers. Uh, so we have our domain here, jacked.ca. So let's go ahead and let's double click on that here. And then we have our users, we have our computers, we have our domain controllers, our managed service accounts, which should be empty, uh, built in, which will be the built in security groups here. And we have users. And users has administrator and guest. Guest is disabled by default here. So, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to go ahead and we're going to create a new user here and we are going to name it jacked admin here and the logon username is going to be jacked admin and then the password is going to be that here and we are going to set that to never expire and user cannot change password that'll be okay so what we're going to want to do is we are going to want to double click on that user, click member of, and we are going to want to go ahead and we are going to want to add domain admin uh, enterprise admin and we are going to want to add in um, administrators and then we're going to want to add in group policy, creator, and schema admins. Now, this isn't really recommended. You should really only add these at the time or like dedicate one to a user. Um, but we could just do that here. And we're going to hit apply and OK. Now, what I like to do is I like to actually go ahead and log out of the default administrator account and we're going to go ahead and we're going to log in with another user here and we're going to type in jacked backslash jacked admin here and we're going to log in with our password and 
and this is going to let us get in here. And now what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to wait for the server manager to come up. And we are going to go into the Active Directory uh, users and computers again. And we are going to go ahead and we are going to disable that administrator again. Now, again, you don't really need to do this, um, but it is recommended to never leave that default administrator account or change the name of it. Uh, you could simply change the name of it, um, but I usually just go ahead and disable that account. So that should be okay here. And let's go ahead and let's reboot this server here. And that will complete our video once it reboots and we can log back in. I will consider that a successful Active Directory setup. And then what we're going to want to do in the next videos, um, we're going to be bringing up a Windows 10 machine on this Hyper-V host, and we are going to join it to our domain. So we're going to be able to log in to users uh, from it. Uh, we are going to be able to eventually uh, run scripts from our Windows 10 machine uh, to affect the server. Uh, so we might have like a Windows 10 like client machine and a Windows 10 like administrator machine uh, so we can administrate the server from Windows 10 but then we can also have like a client so if you had like a user that that's the machine that they would use uh, so there's a lot of different options that you can do with these home labs that are really fun which is why I really like to make them and they really let you practice your PowerShell skills um, and system administration skills so let's go ahead and let's log into the server here let's put in the password so there we are, it's fully complete. It is up and running. Everything seems to be good. The only thing that I am seeing here is we seem to have lost uh, network. So it seems that we won't be able to connect to the internet here. So let's go ahead and let's fix that real quick. So if we do this here and we do network and internet settings, I believe that I remember why this happened the last time. So if we go into properties here, we go into IPv4. So we're going to have this DNS address that it's set to, and it's going to be set to 127.0.0.1. We are just going to want to go ahead and we're going to want to set that to Eight dot eight eight dot eight and then eight dot eight dot four dot four. All right, so let's go ahead and let's see that. So we have our network again here. So that should be okay. As you see that here, so that was set to 127.0.0.1. So we're just going to change that to Google DNSs. So that should be working OK. So that's going to be it for this server here. So we do have a Active Directory domain controller on our Hyper-V host now. So now, like I said, the next steps for us is to really um, build up you just bring this up here. It's going to be really to add more VMs here. So we're going to have our Windows 10 machine next here. And we're going to join that to the domain uh, so we can access some domain users. And then what we're going to want to do after that is we're going to want to configure its IP addresses um, and really link all that stuff properly. So that's pretty much it for today. Make sure to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell to be alerted when that next video comes out. And I will see you on the next video.